Hey there, welcome back, Alex Lyon. Today we are going to look at Blake and McCance's managerial grid. We are going to just treat this as an introduction to this leadership model, and I'm working out of Johnson and Hackman's leadership book, A Communication Perspective. I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. So let's get into those details. Blake and McCance's managerial grid is a really commonly cited leadership model for both task and interpersonal communication. It's connected to several others that focus on task and relationships, but this one has some added value that we'll see in a minute. It identifies the communication style using an X and Y axis and that shows the leader's emphasis. So the X axis is a concern for production and the Y axis is a concern for people. And you're going to see these kinds of variables, those dimensions, in many other leadership theories from that era, the 40s, 50s, and 60s. So what these researchers did was they created a grid, they created official four boxes, and they gave them names and scores. So you could see where you or someone else as a leader might land based upon some kind of self-assessment or questionnaire. So if you were high or low in concern for production and high or low in concern for people, you would end up with a score, one through nine out of those variables. And depending upon your score, you would land in one of these four boxes. And the lowest box is called the impoverished management style. And it's hard to imagine calling this a style, but it is. We have seen, and you've maybe worked for people who had impoverished management. This is where there's really no active attempt on the part of the leader to influence the outcomes of how you're going to, as a follower, enact these tasks. There's a very, uh, you might as, the leader might assign you the work, but then it, the person will leave you to complete it one way or the other. There's just not a lot of hands-on attention in any way. And at the bottom right, we have what's called authority compliance. That's a, when you have a high score, that's a nine, but it's also very low on a concern for people. So here you basically see people as a resource. So there are people, but really it's just a resource to get the job done. And there's not a lot of attention or concern for people. Right in the middle is called the middle of the road management style. And here's where you show an adequate level of concern for both production and for people. And this is like the meaty middle of the road means you're going to get middle of the road results or mediocre results. There's not a lot to stand out here about this leader. And then next we have what we call the country club manager, that's on the top left. That's where there's a high concern for people and lots of attention to building a positive work environment, creating a supporty and friendly atmosphere, but you're really not emphasizing tasks so much in a hands-on way. Now the country club manager may want tasks accomplished, but isn't going to be pushy on that. The country club manager thinks that by investing in the relationships, that is one of the better ways to get beneficial production outcomes. And then we have the team management approach, which is a high score. You might have in this box, the highest score would be a nine on production and nine on people. And this is where the leader is really working with the team as a team member, showing a high concern for people in production and a real collaborative kind of atmosphere. And the managerial grid became the foundation for some other leadership models that came after it, I think from, for Hershey and Blanchard's situational uh, leadership model as well. Now, some additional details about this model is that leaders, according to the research, tend to rely on one style called a dominant communication style. So if you look at the grid, you might think to yourself, oh, that's the way I, I usually am, but it also depends upon what's going on. That means that you have a dominant leadership style that's in one of those boxes. However, leaders sometimes have a backup or secondary orientation that comes out when a situation changes. Let's say it gets more pressured or possibly less pressured then you would switch into things like you might feel a little bit more like a country club or mediocre or middle of the road leader but then when a crisis happens let's say something out of the blue you might really get demanding and focus on results and get to get out of that crisis that might be your secondary now some people might not do that when when a crisis happens they might switch in the other direction and they might say oh i need to be even more concerned about people because i want to check in with how people are feeling so 
if something changes, it doesn't necessarily mean we will automatically default to more of a production focus. And then the most effective style is the team management style. Of course, that approach is high in both concerns. So naturally that would end up in most cases resulting in the most beneficial results. So now that there is a name to this, I'm wondering, question of the day, what is a name to put to your style? So what's your dominant leadership style according to the grid? And also when things change, when you get stressed or when something happens, what tends to be your fallback or your secondary leadership style? I would love to hear your comments in that section below this video. And as mentioned, this grid laid the foundation for a lot of other thinking about leadership studies moving forward. So it's an important one to learn about and appreciate and the steps it took forward in the area of leadership studies. All right, so thanks, take care, and I will see you soon.